Thank you. Yes, I am thankful for on-flight, um, on on-time flights, and everybody's so kind here. So thank you for the warm welcome. Um, I come from Fargo, North Dakota, in the United States, and so we've been traveling for about 24 hours to get here. Um, and I'm so excited that we finally made it. I'm so excited to be here to talk about something I'm really passionate about, um, which is the relationship between students and teachers. And so as we just heard um, from the Teachers Guild, we know that teachers are in the front line, right? Teachers are the difference maker between students who succeed and students who do not succeed. Um, and so I found a few different ways to make sure that students succeed, um, and it all comes down to relationships. And so today I'm hoping to inspire you in the short eight to 10 minutes, but also give you a call to action of some things that you, some tangible things that you can go out and you can do um, no matter where you are. Um, in 2013, I was able to give my first TED talk and um, I was able to give my first TED talk and I talked a lot about a lot of different things from flexible seating, which is why I'm actually here, um, to classroom design, to technology integration. But honestly, the number one thing that kept getting quoted and quoted and quoted was relationships and how that is truly the difference maker. Um, because we can have all the best technology in the world, we can have the latest and greatest in innovations, we can have the best flexible seating classroom design, but if we don't have the right teachers in our building who care about those kids, those kids won't be as successful as they could be. We will fall short in our hopes and our dreams for those students. And so in my classroom, the mantra that I have is that relationships come first and everything else comes second. Um, and this is a focus that we've really been putting um, into place really for the last five years in my building. So like I said, in 2013, I gave my first TED talk and the number one quoted line was that relationships between students and passionate teachers will always be the foundation of successful classrooms. And so 50 years ago, I believe that was still the most important. And today, teachers in the building are still the most important component of innovative classrooms. And even 100 years from now, we're still going to need passionate teachers to build empathy with those kids and to make relationships with students. Um, I've been studying a lot about the difference and the impact of adult behaviors um, and how that impacts student learning in the classroom. And so when I talk about adult behaviors, I'm talking about every single interaction and how literally every single interaction matters. Um, and I'm talking about interactions that take three to five seconds with kids. So when our kids get on the bus in Mapleton, North Dakota, the bus driver says their name and greets them and tells them good morning. He does not just tell them to get to the back of the bus. Um, when they come into the school, we have someone greeting them saying good morning. Our lunch lady knows their name and she greets them warmly. And when they go outside to play in the playground, that's the fourth adult interaction with them. And we make sure it's a positive one. By the time that they come to my classroom, I should be the fifth positive interaction that they have had that morning. And the science is saying that the number of um, positive interactions those kids have impacts how much they're going to learn in my classroom later on. So we can't control what kind of learning or what kind of morning um, kids are having at home, but we can control every three to five second interaction that we have with them in our classrooms and in our schools. So I do a few different things to make sure that my kids love school. My favorite TED Talk is actually by Rita Pearson. Um, her TED Talk is Every Child Deserves a Champion. And in her talk, she talks about how kids don't learn from teachers that they don't like. And so I take that to the next level, and I really want my kids to love me. And so I'm going to give you some ideas of some tangible things you can take, some to-do work that you can bring back to your country, you can bring back to your school or your district, to make sure that really kids are feeling the love. Um, so the first thing that I do is I have a morning meeting every single day. So we start our day with a greeting um, where kids greet each other and um, smile at each other and say good morning and we make sure that we're saying their name because so many kids go through an entire school day without even hearing their name one time. Um, and so we're making sure we're saying their name. We're doing a share time where kids can share out things that's happening in their life because some of these kids know more of a real world than I will ever know in my comfortable home in Fargo, North Dakota. And so giving them a share time is important because here's the thing about kids. 
Kids love to talk. All kids universally around the world love to talk. And if we don't give them time to talk, they're going to be talking during your lessons anyways. So we might as well give them time to talk.、Um, the third thing that we do is we have fun together. Fun, fun, like actual fun in school can still exist, right? And so we do games and we do activities. And then we talk about the news and notes for the day. And every single day starts with this joy, with this handshake, this hug, this high five, this greeting, and them hearing their name. Um, on Fridays, I give my kids words of affirmation. It's based off of Gary Chapman's Five Love Languages book. If you haven't read it, I highly suggest it.、Um, it impacts every single relationship that I have. But we know that all kids need and crave and deserve words of affirmation. Every single kid needs and deserves to know how awesome that they are. And so, throughout the week, one thing I do is I write down specific positive feedback about things that I'm seeing that they're doing, and I write it down. And then I stick it right on their mailbox. So they see it before they leave for the weekend,、um, and it's specific. It doesn't just say "great job" or "good job" or "awesome." I give them specific words of affirmation. I think about how many kids are on Friday after they read that note. They're not excited for the weekend. I have so many kids this year that are literally counting down the days and the minutes and the seconds until they know that they get to my classroom door on Monday morning.、Um, and I think it's our job as classroom teachers, whether you teach K through university, to make sure that you're greeting those kids at the door and you're asking them how they're doing and you give them a handshake, a hug, or a high five, and you say their name.、Um, and when you do all of these things. In your classroom, kids start to feel loved, and when they start to feel loved, they start to take risks because they feel like they're safe, and they feel like they're part of more than just a classroom. They become part of a family.、Um, and earlier, I referenced Rita Pearson's talk and how I want kids to not just like me. I really, truly want kids to love me. I want kids to love me. So much that I get a tweet from a parent on the first day of school that says, "Have a great first day." Riley G said today was more exciting than his birthday, and in America, a nine-year-old's birthday is like the best day in the world. And so this is my standard every single day. How am I making a school better than their birthday? Because ultimately, the teacher. Is the gatekeeper to everything that happens and doesn't happen in the classroom. So, what am I doing as a teacher to make sure that kids want to keep coming back to school? I got this love note in 2015. Dear Miss Delzer, I love you so much. I want to live with you for the rest of my life. P.S. Even when I am dead. <laughs> this is my ultimate goal for all kids. What if every kid loved their teacher? This much. What if every relationship started and ended with this? Here's the thing: kids are learning how they want to act and who they want to become by watching you. Teachers are the ultimate role models. They see everything that you do and everything that they don't do. They notice if you give other teachers in the hallway high fives or if you look the other way. They notice if you want to be judged and see if your haircut is on point. You get your haircut and you stand in front of a classroom the next day, and they will give you all of their opinions. They're learning who they want to be by watching you. This is a picture of a recent award ceremony that I had this fall,、um, where I was accepting a Young Alumni Achievement Award on behalf of my university in North Dakota, and they told me that I had 20 seats that I could fill. I could only invite 20 guests to sit on my behalf at this ceremony. So of course, I invited my fiance and our family, and my parents, and my family from Oregon, my colleagues, my close friends and family. But I also saved five seats for former students. Because I would not be the teacher that I am today if I didn't have amazing students challenging me, and pushing me, and teaching me every single day. And when I was going through the photo roll after I got the the photographs back, I was going through all of the pictures. The picture behind me really stood out、um, because I was here giving my acceptance speech in this huge ballroom, and I'm noticing. Look at my students so dressed up for the gala. One of them literally went out and bought a ball gown. Like she looks like she's 21 years old, and she's really eight years old. But I keep looking at Emily, the little girl with the black and white dress, and I look at her looking at me. Through conversations with her mom, I know Emily wants to literally be me when she grows up,、um, and I look at the way she's looking at me. And for me, it's this positive pressure and this positive reminder that kids are always watching, and the relationships between myself and these kids 
is whether they succeed or not. It's truly the difference maker. Thank you so much. Um, I have one just message to leave with you before I say goodbye. Um, and this comes from Gracie. Um, she's age nine, and we've been talking about difficult students and why some kids have success in school and some kids don't. And I've been trying to find the answer to this puzzle for a long time. And um, Gracie said that sometimes kids just need a teacher who believes in them a little more. Gracie believes that the difference between kids who succeed and kids who fail is not curriculum or innovations or flexible seating or all the best technology. It's simply a teacher who believes in her kids just a little bit more. So my challenge for you as you go back to your countries, to your cities, to your school, is to talk to your teachers and talk to your kids and get to know them and start building those relationships. Thank you so much for your time. I look forward to seeing you this week. Thank you. Thank you, Kayla, uh, for the emotional speech. I made a habit for myself, uh, even though the research team is doing most of the work in research researching, is not only reading the packages in our own website, but also visiting the websites of the innovations themselves and really understanding what is the essence. And, and practically, in each and every case, uh, I end up with awe, meaning is that, wow, this, the, the work they are doing is even better than I expected, watching the videos and so on. So, like mentioned, the, each and every innovator, 100 innovator, will get the yearbook tomorrow, and everyone else can download it for free and so forth, and you, and you are finding a lot more information in here. Uh, we are wrapping up with, with a short video of, of two minutes, uh, which is sort of like... There's one poet in Finland who says is that love is unexpected at every time of the day something great can happen. And uh, that's exactly what happened with us. Uh, it was a typical foggy day in Helsinki and we came to the office and then we received a mail from a student called Jordi AC who is actually present here. And, and, and she said is that, by the way, uh, I love what you do so much is that I decided to make a promotional video for you. You can use it or not. I just made it out of fun. And it was eight minutes, and we edited that one down to two, two and so on. So all of this, this came from Jordi. It was a surprise for me, a surprise for all of us. And, 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 and we kind of like love to see that kind of surprise so much more in the future. So let's see the two-minute video by, by Jordi. Con amor fuimos traídos, un amor que alas a todos nos dio. I started this project because when I came to Finland trying to escape my own education system, which had me feeling really unhappy and just overall unsatisfied, I realized that I wasn't the only student who had come for this reason. And I thought that was a huge issue. All around the world, students are feeling really unhappy with school, have lost their interest in learning, feel that exams and homeworks are a waste of time, and overall don't feel prepared for their life ahead because they don't have the reassurance that school has prepared them for it. We've been using the same system for over 100 years now that we don't know what else to do. We don't know how what changes to make or how to improve it. Luckily, there are some great things going on in education nowadays, like there's a whole organization dedicated to finding and sharing innovations in education called Hundred. There is this wonderful school that dedicates its studies to traveling around the world and learning through travel. And then there is another school that is completely student-centered called Big Picture Learning which takes the student as they are, takes their passions, takes their interests, and then puts school into it. Now it's just up to the students to keep this conversation going. It is not right for students to feel unhappy at school, to feel unprepared, to lose their interest in learning. If you are feeling these ways, then let's keep talking about it. Let's start talking about it. Go to the 100 website and find an innovation you would like to be implemented into your school. Or make your own innovation. Find new ways. Discover and put a pin on the way that bets, that helps you learn the best. And tell your teachers this. We are all individuals, so we should not be learning the same way. But we also need to find a way that can help us all learn together. In the end, education is for the students, so we should be asked about it. Queremos crecer juntos de las manos.
Thank you, Jordi, and, and the schools uh, she was talking about, Think Global, they are present here, Jamie, uh, and, and, and the Big Picture Learning, which is a beautiful chain of schools. Uh, one of the founders, Elliot Washer, was, was giving a keynote in, in Los Angeles and so forth. So there's a lot of beautiful things happening. What is our goal in this kind of summit is, is actually it's small and big at the same time. What is our goal is that if you innovators can make one valuable connection during the following two or three days, I think that that's already been valuable because that's how the change happens. You take steps and then beautiful things start to happen. I would love to thank uh, at the end three, uh, three organizations or companies who have made all of, all of this possible. First of all, I would really love to thank my hometown Helsinki uh, who has been organizing, organizing Helsinki Education Week together with us. A tremendous amount of work, Ilona Taimela, Lisa Pohjolainen, who are present here as well, uh, have been doing a great amount of work. We've been having 120 different kind of events around Helsinki this week, and, and this is the plan is that this is the first of, of many these kind of weeks, because the goal of Helsinki is to open doors, in, encourage global communication, uh, and, and so forth. And I think that each and every city in the world should be doing the same, meaning is that there's, there's so much more out there, and we live in a global world, and I think that schools should be more global as well. So a big thanks to City of Helsinki for all of this work. Then OP, uh, a Finnish company, has, has been helping us a lot, lot in, in, uh, in Finland. Like mentioned, we are a non-profit. Uh, we are trying to get fund money from foundations, from companies, and so on. But our main sponsor from, from today one has been Supercell. And many of you visited the offices of Supercell, which they gave for free because they love the mission, they love the work you are doing, and, and so forth. And, and I think that none of you would be here without the work of Supercell. So thanks for the Supercell people. There's few of them here as well. <laughs> and, and all the 100 innovators, please do up, download the app. You are getting a lot of information about everything. Again, that's also free of charge. And, and so on. We are having dinners to, uh, tonight in two locations where the real network, networking starts. And, and we continue tomorrow. Thanks so much, not only for being here, but for the tremendously beautiful work you have been doing before the summit and after the summit. Thanks so much for being here, and let's continue the dialogue. Thank you.